welcome back people um to those who came back thank you for coming back to the new ones i appreciate you as well let's start where we ended on part one but all this changed when reconstruction ended in 1877 and federal troops withdrew from the old confederacy during reconstruction the period after the civil war when the south reorganizes political social and economic systems to account for the end of slavery federal troops occupied the south these troops served to guarantee black men's right to vote and the republican controlled federal government will only end the military military occupation when states rewrote their constitutions to recognize the citizenship and voting rights of black men white southerners generally despised these troops and wanted an end to the intervention of the federal government in the south the compromise of 1877 gave white southerners their chance to stop the military occupation of the south in the compromise southern democrats agreed not to block the vote by which congress awarded the contested electoral votes to to rutherford b hayes and Hayes therefore became president. In return, Republicans agreed to withdraw federal troops from actively intervening in the politics of Louisiana and South Carolina, the last two states occupied by federal troops. Accordingly, within two months of becoming president, Hayes ordered federal troops in Louisiana and South Carolina to return to their bases. Ooh, how little they think of black americans right with federal troops no longer present to protect the rights of black citizens white supremacy quickly returned to the old confederate state voting fell off sharply in most areas because of threats by white employers and violence from the kkk the biggest bullies on the face of the earth a ruthless secret organization bent on preserving white supremacy at all costs i don't call i don't call them supremacists i call them racist because there's nothing supreme about what they do white majorities began to vote out the republicans and replace them with democratic governors legislators and local officials doesn't that sound like the critical race theory here's my personal input this makes you wonder about democratic states what what they did back in the 1800s and it brings to mind crt one gotta wonder why so many white folks shudder and explode when crt is mentioned why i mean check out the history of america the stage was set for everything white in order to eat have a roof over your head put clothes on your back who or what group had and has the tools and the means to help you obtain these simple essentials or hinder you let's not play the game when you don't want your dirty laundry aired that's it plain and simple you just don't want the truth to come out because if it was all lies you will let the lies dispel themselves but you know it's truth to it that's why you get so upset laws were soon passed banning interracial marriages and racially segregating railroad cars along with public schools laws and practices were also put in place to make sure blacks would never again freely participate in elections here we go let me put a pin in this real quick this just came to mind let, let me let me let me say something very simple if you feel that you are superior in every way even your skin the tone of your skin is superior why do you have to do so many things to force this on people because when something is superior and something else is inferior it's evident and you don't have to do trickeries and obstacles to show that you're superior and black folks are inferior because if they're completely inferior there's nothing they can be able to do better than you nothing on this earth 400 years would have shown that black people are inferior they can't do anything you do but it has been lies every lie has been exposed and disrupted let's continue but one problem stood in the way of denying black americans the right to vote 
the 15th Amendment, which guaranteed them this right. To a great extent, Mississippi led the way in overcoming the barrier presented by the 15th Amendment. In 1890, Mississippi held a convention to write a new state constitution to replace the one in force since Reconstruction. The white leaders of the convention were clear about their intentions. We came here to exclude the Negro. Can you imagine them saying that right now publicly? Declared the convention president because of the 15th Amendment. They could not ban blacks from voting. Instead, they wrote into the state constitution a number of voter restrictions, making it difficult for most blacks to register to vote. Here's my personal input again. Their actions bring to mind their favorite phrase. And I'm sure you guys who were born in this country, you know what that phrase is. If you don't, I'm going to remind you. Refresh your memory. It's obey the law. Oh, everyone else seemed to have to obey the law but racists, right? Is that is that what we're doing? Let's continue. The new constitution required an annual poll tax. Which, wrote, which voters had to pay for two years before the election. Jeez. This was a difficult economic burden to place on black Mississippians who made up the poorest part of the state's population. Many simply couldn't pay it. And they knew this. And you know this, man! When poll taxes, literacy tests, and grandfather clauses and white primaries did not stop blacks from registering and voting. Intimidation often did the job. Black American citizens attempting to exercise his right to vote would often be threatened with losing his job. Denial of credit, threats of eviction, and verbal abuse by white voting clerks also prevented black southerners from voting. When all else failed, mob violence and even lynching kept black people away from the ballot box this is a damn shame it at this point i'm trying to tell you folks especially black americans it's all a psychological game you know how somebody can be just so vile so corrupt but they'll play mind games with you to to flip the script and make it seem like you're you're worse than them Okay, let me continue. Vincent Hutchinson, a political science who studies voter patterns at the University of Michigan, says the first major shift in Black Party affiliation away from the, Rep the Republican Party happened during the Depression. Franklin Roosevelt's second administration, led by the New Deal, made the Democrats a beacon for black Americans deeply affected by the crushing poverty that was plaguing the country. But many black voters stuck with the party of Lincoln. The data suggests that even as late, teen, as, late as 1960, only about two-thirds of black Americans were identified with the Democratic Party, he says. Now, two-thirds is a pretty big number. But when you compare it today, that number hovers at around 90%. 90%. So what happened? According to Hutchinson's and the Turf's university historian, Penal Joseph, Barry Goldwater happened. <laughs> Barry Goldwater for Republicans becomes a metaphor for the Republican response for this revolution that's happening in the United States, Joseph says. The revolution was Freedom Summer, the period 50 years ago when hundreds of college students, most of them white, had journeyed to Mississippi to help black Mississippians become registered voters. The state's response to that integrated movement had been swift and violent. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and they say that black people, the only way they know how to express themselves is through violence. Jesus Christ. Less than a month before the GOP met for its national convention in San Francisco, organizers and we will put a pin in the second part and continue with the third part in two clicks thank you again